Saturn is kind of boring compared to Jupiter. That was the thought that I had when I started planetary astrophotography, and it was based on the fact that Jupiter's surface is just filled to the brim with these incredibly dynamic, distinct, and easily identifiable surface features. And because of that, you can actually watch the planet as it rotates. And even more than that, you can watch the bands rotating at different speeds over time. Uh, it probably is going to take at least a couple days to notice the difference, but you can actually track the surface as it changes. And that's before you even get into the Galilean moons, which they add their own little flavor in terms of occult eclipses and transits basically all the time since Jupiter doesn't really have a tilt. All of that is put together with the fact that everything about Jupiter is really accessible to amateur astronomers. Like, almost everything that I just said is able to be captured by your random guy like me, which is amazing. Now, Saturn, unfortunately, is a little bit of a different story. Saturn is absolutely magnificent. The rings are one of the best places in the solar system to actually observe gravitational interactions at play, with these tiny little moons in and around the rings that cause little irregularities and whose effects ripple throughout the rings in a really neat way. NASA's Cassini probe went to Saturn and filmed a bunch of these actually really dynamic interactions going on on and around Saturn with the rings and the moons. But unfortunately, so many of these details are just so fine that for people viewing from Earth with our little ter uh, terrestrial amateur scopes, the butt kind of stops pretty early, making a lot of Saturn's dynamism pretty exclusive. But I mentioned Jupiter doesn't really have a tilt, um, but Saturn does. And you may be asking yourself, like, why is that really important? Because Earth's got a pretty big tilt. It's uh, around 20-ish degrees. Mars has a pretty uh, sizable tilt as well. So why does, why does Saturn's make it so unique? And the answer to that is that it's got those rings, and it's got some really close orbiting moons. And because it has that tilt, you're not confined to watching, like, Galilean moons just zip out and in and out and in kind of thing, but you can actually watch the moons of Saturn as they orbit the planet, with the close-in moons having a short enough orbital period where capturing that's actually kind of reasonable. And all of that's kind of on top of the background knowledge that Saturn has some of the most interesting moons in the solar system, namely Titan and Enceladus. So naturally, NASA's already done this before. But we're not going to let NASA have all the fun here. We're going to show them once and for all how their tiny little Hubble Space Telescope compares to our amazing, overwhelmingly superior 6-inch Schmidt Cassegrain run by an amateur. <laughs> but if we're going to do that, if we're going to take on NASA, we're going to need a plan. So the first thing we kind of need to come up with is an exposure plan because Saturn's surface and moons are so different in brightness that you can't really resolve them together at the same time. You can with Jupiter fairly easily, but normally only Titan out of all of Saturn's moons shows up with Saturn in a similar exposure. But what I'm wondering here is instead of stacking two images, one exposure for the moons and one exposure for Saturn together in a composite, I'm wondering if we can just pull out the faint details in an exposure of Saturn that way we'd be able to keep our sample rate high and I wouldn't have to constantly be toggling back and forth between exposure settings. And fortunately we have some old data which we can pull and stretch the histograms on to try and see if we actually captured the moons. And it looks like we did. Nice. The next thing's kind of a question of how zoomed in do we actually want to be? Like how many Barlows do we want to have? And fortunately I've actually taken two separate cases, one with one Barlow and one with two. And it looks like it doesn't make too big of a difference, but we're going to go with two Barlows just in case to try and make sure we're resolving stuff that's closer to Saturn if we need that extra resolution. And then the third question is simply, how long do we want to time lapse for? I've looked at some NASA simulations online to try and figure out how long we want to go, and I'm thinking three to four hours, but that might vary a little bit depending on the specific time that we go. So with our little plan put together, it's time to mark down a bunch of calendar dates with good moon positions for Saturn, and just try and find one that also has some pretty good seeing conditions too. 
And after a couple days of batch processing going through our auto stacker, Registax, and then raw therapy workflow, we finally came back with some results. The first thing's a little bit hard to see, but there is a little transit going on on the south hemisphere of Saturn right there. But the really neat part here is when we enhance. So I actually think that went super well. We got Titan, Rhea, Tethys, Dion, Enceladus, and even Mimas. Um, there is another little moon in there that it's apparently just a little bit out of our reach for light gathering capability, but six is pretty good. And I said six, because there's actually a little other guy in there on the left that's jutting out in sort of a different way than the other ones. And that's actually a star. So technically, it's actually a little bit more appropriate to view the video like this instead. So you actually have Saturn's moon system moving against the backdrop of the stars, which is another sort of proper motion thing that seems pretty neat that we also captured here. But it doesn't stop there either, because Saturn's got one more little surprise to show us. This is my fourth image of it in about three years, so we actually have a larger time scale too. And if we animate that, it looks like this. While this is super neat, it's technically not the best representation of what's physically going on here, because this is a three-year-ish snippet of a 30-year orbit. So I'm just running the clip back and forth and back and forth, so it's not actually encompassing the entirety of the action. But additionally, Saturn actually wobbles like a top. It doesn't tip back and forth to us like in the video, but since there's not actually any background to mark the rotation against, it just looks like it's tipping back and forth towards us but it does help us actually see like the seasons and stuff going on on Saturn as long as those seven-ish year seasons may be. So needless to say, I've changed my mind since then. Saturn's a beautiful one, but it can be pretty difficult too. Maybe in the near future we'll send some probes out to Saturn or maybe Titan, but until then, we'll have to settle for our views from our little pale blue dot. <laughs>